So one of our first assignments is going to be to make one of these cheesy, motivational, inspirational type posters. So the reason why we're going to pick this assignment as one of the beginning ones is it will teach you how to use text and to type and how to edit text and it will teach you how to find and download a photo. So, okay, so the first thing that you should do is go onto Google or whatever um, web browser you have and search the words motivational quote or inspirational quote something like that and do a search I have mine on images so I can get some ideas for which one I'm going to do so maybe if you're a big Kobe Bryant fan you can pick some of his quotes or whatever you can just get a generic one whatever speaks to you find one I think I am just going to do this one here your only limit is your mind so to find a picture to use for this project, you can go to a website called pixabay.com. I have a link to it in your slide instructions. We're going to use this website a lot. You can download these for free without an account for now. At some point, you'll probably have to create an account to do certain things. But for now, you can just go straight there and start using the pictures. So you can either go ahead and just search their news, their main feed here for pictures and click discover more. If you don't know what you want, I already know what I want basically. So I'm going to go in the search bar and choose the word space. Now, one thing I, a couple things I need to bring up about Pixabay, please make sure that you have safe search checked. We will not be allowed to use this website at school if you do not have that checked. So make sure that you please check that. If I see anyone using Pixabay, Without the safe search on, you're going to lose your privilege to use it and you won't be able to get very good pictures. All right, and then the other thing I need to tell you about Pixabay, they also have the sponsored images from iStock up here. We cannot use these photos either. These are paid for photos, and when you click on them, it'll take you to this iStock thing, and then you'll see that the photos have this thing called a watermark on them, and so we can't use those. So if that happens, make sure you just back up and get back into Pixabay and if you're choosing the pictures that have the bigger thumbnail those are fine that's on Pixabay so just make sure that you're not using any of these sponsored images all right I am going to choose this picture right here and notice once again it gives me this ad for iStock don't click on any of those pictures all right I'm going to use this picture here so I can either right click on here and I can go to save image as I can tell it where to save it to you can also copy an image so for now you can do save image as or you can go over here and you can choose free download choose when you're trying to pick what size to use I would recommend just picking one of the medium ones don't pick the real small one don't pick the real big one choose one of the two in the middle and you're gonna click on download So after you download a photo from Pixabay, you're going to come down here on the bottom left of your screen and say show in folder. And because if you try to open it from the downloads, you're going to get this warning here. So it's not going to go there. You need to move the file from downloads into this PC to your student drive. So the way you do that is you open a new window. So you go file, new window and when you have two windows open you can drag the folder out of the downloads and put them in your student drive so it should look like this this is where you're going to save any files that you download the first thing i should do everybody should do the same thing go up into window and go to workspace and make sure that you're on essentials default in fact, I would say at the beginning, say reset essentials. That way, if anybody moved anything around in that workspace, you will um, be able to fix it. Because if you don't, if we're all look going on a different workspace, like if I'm in this workspace here, you're going to have different things open on the side and it'll be confusing. So just go to window, workspace, and choose essentials default. That way over here on the right hand side, you'll have color properties and layers and so those are the three things we really only need properties and layers for this first assignment all right so let's open up the photo that we downloaded from pixabay go to file open 
and I have mine in downloads. You guys are going to have yours elsewhere. Where's the photo I downloaded? Here it comes. All right, I have this Milky Way picture, and I am ready to type my quote on here. Now, I wanted to use this extra picture here. You guys aren't going to be doing that, but I'll go ahead and show you just in case you wanted to. I wanted to have this picture on my poster also. So I have this open. Notice how it has a checkerboard background. That means it's transparent there. So I'm going to go to Control A to select it. Notice how I have these dotted lines. That means it's selected when you have this dotted lines going around. And I'm going to do Control C to copy. And then I don't need that um, file open anymore. And then Control V to paste. All right, so I want to have that graphic with with my poster. I'm going to turn it off for now, but I want to use it later in my in my project. All right, so let's get to typing. The first thing you want to do is get your type tool. And when you first start typing, it is going to make it the same font, color, and size that you use last. So when I first click into this document, whatever font size color or anything that you used before, it's going to pick up where you left off. So I'm going to click here in the middle of my document and it's going to give me this fake text. All right. And I'm just going to type right over that and put my saying, my inspirational saying in here. All right, so that's the saying that I want to have in here, and you can see that it doesn't fit. So let me show you how to adjust the text. Now, before you can do anything, you need to get out of this text editing mode. You know, my cursor is blinking here. I'm going to click this check right there. All right, so now I can go over here, and I can change my font if I want to. So if you click right here, you can choose a different font. Um, I'm just going to leave it on the one I had. I like that one. So choose your font there where it says character. And then here is where you choose the size. You can either highlight directly in there and pick a number and press enter. Or you can hover over the little icon and you can see how that goes as you slide back and forth. It gets bigger and smaller. All right, so you can adjust that. And now the space between these lines of text is called letting. This is over here. So once again, you can do the same thing. You can either choose the letting. Notice how when I make it a really small number, it squishes it all together. The highest number it has here is 72. That's still not going to be enough. So your letting should be at least the same size as your font size. So I'm going to put 240, and that looks pretty good. All right, now you can change the paragraph option. So if you want it left justified, center, you know, you can make those changes there. I obviously need to move mine because it's off to the side. So to move it, there's two things you can do. This very top tool right here is the move tool. So when you click on that, it lets you move things wherever you want. And let's say I move it right here, but I want it to be just nudged a little bit. You can use your arrow keys. So I'm pressing on my right arrow key on my keyboard or you can move it down. And then the other type of editing you can do is you can do something called transform. To do that, you do control T. That gives you this box around here again. And now you can actually make things smaller, bigger. You can move it. You can go out to the corner and rotate it, anything you want. And if you want to undo something, control Z is undo. So I'm going to go ahead and use control T to make this about that size. And once I get it where I want, again, I'm going to press the check mark to get out of that editing mode. All right. And then I'm going to go over here. Now notice over here, this is my layers tab. I have my background is the, the photo that I chose and I have my text on this layer. I had copied in that other little graphic before and I have that on a different layer. I'm also going to use control T on that. Now this is something you all don't have to do. I just felt like adding it to my, gra uh, to my poster too. 
So I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to go back to my text layer and move it up a little bit so that it shows that graphic below it. All right, now one other thing before we stop the video, if you want to do something like put an outline around your letters, like if you can't read them very good and you wanted to have an outline, you could go to the bottom of your layers file, see where that little FX is? You can click on that, add a layer style. You can also go up here, layer, and go to layer style. And you can just click on blending options. And it gives you all these different things that you can add to your text. I'm going to add a stroke to mine, which basically means outline. So you click the, the check mark, turns it on and off. And then to make any edits to the stroke, you have to have it highlighted. So I can change the color. If I wanted the outline to be a different color, you can do that. I'm going to leave it on black. And then make sure the position is outside. And then you can change the size. Of the outline here. All right, you can experiment with these other things, but those are called layer styles. And then let's say, okay, all right, so I'm done with mine. That's really all you need to do is just have a photo background and add some text to it, learn how to adjust. Oh, one other thing I should mention on properties, it shows you properties for whatever tool you have chosen in whatever layer. So obviously you don't see text things anymore. I actually have to go on my text layer and then it shows me that stuff again. So if I'm on the background layer and I want to change text and you don't see see it, just make sure that you go on to your text layer and then it will show you the things that you can change on that layer. So if I wanted to change the size, the color of my text, just click on that. You can change the color. All right, now let's go ahead and save this. So you're going to go to File, Save, and I'll call it Mind Poster, and I'm going to save it to my desktop. You guys are going to save it to your student drive, and make sure you just save it as a Photoshop file. So you're very, you're going to always save things two ways, as a JPEG and a Photoshop file. Photoshop files first, say Save. And what that does is it makes it so that your files have layers so that you can edit things. All right. And then you're going to need to save a second file because that is the one that you're going to turn in on your website. So you're going to go to file, save a copy and choose JPEG. All right. Mind poster, copy JPEG. And let me show you the difference. Oh, put this on six or seven. One of those numbers down there is just fine. And I'll show you the difference between the JPEG. Sometimes people would forget to save their Photoshop file. And what happens with your JPEG, This is the JPEG is the file you put on your website. But if you go in here, you, you can see that you can't edit it. Your layers are all flat. So I can't change the color of the text or change anything about it anymore. But on the Photoshop file, you see you have your layers. So you can still go in and change change things about your your art. So it's always important to save two files, your PSD, which is your Photoshop document, and the JPEG, which is the one that you're going to put in your website.